Hello, everybody. I'm here to speak to you today about how visual language impacts all of our lives. Some of us don't consider ourselves to be creative, but whether you are or are not, you still have an understanding of how people communicate to you through images. The first example I'm going to show you is Times Square. That was once recognized as a hub of how we experience branding. You see things at large scale, you see lights, you see flashing, you see competition of how things are positioned to get your attention and to get you to react and respond to them. Now, the paradigm has shifted a little bit. In our pockets, we have phones that have high-powered cameras in them. We can kind of curate what we want to see and where we want to give our attention. Over 100 million pieces of content are uploaded to Instagram every day. So now you have brands and individuals competing for your attention, and the byproduct of that, sometimes we end up overwhelmed. Instead of seeing everything, we get desensitized and we see nothing. So how do we connect with people? And I think it's through authenticity. It's understanding who we're trying to reach and how and how, what connects with that audience. For me, it's storytelling. I'm going to walk you through some projects and examples of work of how I kind of craft stories to connect. Get Rich or Die Trying is an album package that I designed for an artist named 50 Cent. When approaching this cover, I had to get familiar with the music. I sat down, I had conversations with him. We got to the root of what those words meant. I understand them, but they meant something different to him than they meant to me. So in doing that, we wanted to tell a little bit of his story. What most people understood about him was that he had been shot. So knowing that, we went with a bullet hole in the glass on this album cover. That goes to the kind of common denominator of what everyone knows, but I wanted to give something unexpected. So the typography is very elegant. I didn't choose it just because I like those letters. I chose those because they help tell the story. In addition to how we look at him and see him standing there, he's wearing a holster, he's wearing a diamond belt buckle, he has all of these things that speak to the wealth aspect, but you also have this violence and this, this story that tells how things were acquired. So now, on the get rich, you know, when you look in the package, we're looking at how he acquired this money, what he's doing to get it. You see details of what he's trying to attain or did attain. You see elements of the conflict that go within it. And then we also get to a point of seeing him standing defiant and confident with what he's gone out and done for himself. So it's not my story, but it's being true to what he's trying to do. In this instance, art isn't representing myself and my reality. I'm lending my art to someone else's to help complement it. And that, that's really what's most important. That's kind of the challenge that goes into every project that I work on. It's not being true to what I want to do, but how do we tell the right story? In other examples, like this project that I'm going to share, it's called Fit the Description. This is something that isn't about a product that's for sale or mass media. It's about speaking to a social issue. In this case, it was policing in the black community. So <clears throat> in doing the key art, I took images of two men. One is a civilian, one is a police officer. This project is a series of video interviews of black male civilian and a black male in law enforcement sitting down having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So here, the posters are cropped tight on the, each individual's face. There's no indication of who, who is who. It strips them down and just makes them two individuals. And then in looking at this, the typography is the same, the words are the same, the position is the same. But in looking at these two separate posters, each one functions on its own, but it highlights the conflict. They're not seeing eye to eye. They're actually facing in opposite directions. And then I had to figure out when these things go out into the world, how do we kind of take advantage of more opportunities to continue the story? So when billboards would be presented in the street, I made a third poster. And this one had both, both individuals on them. So this poster could stand on its own. It tells the story by itself. But when positioned in between the other two, it becomes a bridge. And if you look at how the typography is, the words in the middle become a through line, and it connects everything. It highlights the fact that there is an unavoidable relationship. Another example of how I would approach work as it relates to a social issue, but this one is more of my personal perspective. I was involved in a project called For Freedoms. It's one of the largest scale art pieces that has been approached, and it was a national project where billboards were bought out across the entire 
United States to give artists perspectives to use their voice to influence change in our country. Artists were able to use messaging to encourage people to see things and be motivated to mo vote in the midterm elections. I had the good fortune of working with a Gordon Parks image. He's a legendary photographer. He's someone whose work I've been well aware of for a very long time. And I was given this photo. And sometimes my job is just to not mess it up. Like this thing is great <laughs> on its own. So, but this is not the format of a billboard. So I had to figure out how I'm gonna keep the importance of this, but also make it in, work in the format that I was given to work with. My approach was to zoom in, come tight on the people, so you could see the individuals, and then add these words, which were from a writing that Gordon did at, after taking this photo, where he kind of saw the likeness between each other, and he wrote, I am you. I took these words, I kept them as a stroke, so you could see through them. I have people interacting with the letters. And then there's also layering that gives depth and perspective. These words are among the people, it lives with them. You see the, the gentleman in front of the M, the guy whose arm pops out through the I. You see the other gentleman in front of the O. There's also a woman in the M. You see her smile. You see her, just the expression on her face. All of those things are important. So this is what I wanted to do and set out to accomplish, but then you get to see it in the wild. This is one version of that billboard. Madison, Wisconsin is where this one was placed. Then there was another one that was in Brooklyn that unfortunately I didn't get to see. I was dying to see this one and I wasn't in town. But luckily this exhibit was given space in a museum. And now I got to go and see this in person in a museum in a different setting. And the thing that's beautiful about this is that when the work becomes, when it succeeds at what it's intended for, it has the ability to transcend and go even further. Sometimes visual language extends not to print media or digital things or things that we see on computers, but how we engage with spaces. This project is one where we had to work, I had to work backwards with a team. I had nothing to do with these, this image that you're looking at. This is kind of the draw and the central point of an exhibit where a light this installation was being done in New York City. In New York, we have skyscrapers, there's lights everywhere, you can't see the stars. So stars were installed in a space, and my job was to figure out how to invite people as a transition point from one area to another. And we did that through construction of a tunnel. The important thing was to not be able to see where you were going and to draw people in without words. There's no sign that says walk this way. So this moment became a key thing because people just walked in and they were like, what is that? And, and there was a, a reception, so you had to wait for a while. You couldn't immediately go there, but it built the anticipation because everyone wanted to just kind of see where this road led them to. But it was just a transition point, but this became more of a focal point because people want to document where they are and what, where they've been, what they experienced, and they want to memorialize those things and share it. So that tunnel became the central part of how people shared, the, shared their experience. It became larger on social media, and it, it was what kind of drew other people to come out and have a similar experience. When all the cylinders are firing right, the work becomes a part of culture. It becomes bigger than the moment that it was created for. It's not about selling a product. It's not about reaching consumers. I've never met a consumer. I meet people. And in my work, I deal with people. And when, when you do some, something that connects with people, they feel seen through design. Because you're not only speaking to people, when you do it right, you're speaking for people. People feel like they're heard and they're seen. And now, you know, since we started with social media, I'm gonna go back to social media. A lot of my work is anonymous. People don't know me, they don't know my team, they just know how the work is out in the world. And for me, it's not important that they know the story from my perspective. I give it out so that people can experience what they want and feel what they want from it. It means something else to them. But now I get to go and tell you about the process. This is what I was thinking. This is what I was doing. I get to share the rewards. The Grammy that, you know, that I won that I'm extremely proud of, um, I get to kind of tell what it means to me because it means something very different to me than it means to others. I also get to reinterpret some of my work and tell different stories using the same imagery because it shows that variation of what is intended or what the symbolism is that we're responding to. And then lastly, sometimes I get to see my work celebrated by others, which makes me extremely proud. This um, representation of the Get Rich or Die Trying cover was 
special to me because when, we, when I first finished the 50 Cent album cover, somebody that saw it said, y'all made him look like a superhero. 15 years later, 13, however many, many years later, <laughs> Marvel adapted certain classic hip hop album covers where they took their, their characters and they put them in place of the artists. So years later, I'm looking at work that I did that I'm proud of, and I'm seeing Marvel celebrating it when they took 50 Cent out of his own cover and inserted Iron Man in there, because that's how they saw it. So that's the beauty of speaking through visual language. That's why I do what I do. And that's, I think, the important thing, what's universal is that we should care about what we do and appreciate it for what it is and approach it with, with the gravity that it carries in everything that we do. That's what I do, and that's what I wanted to share with you. Thank you.